Hello! In this video, I'm going to open up a Flask app inside GitHub Codespaces, get it running locally, so it ought to be exposed on a port that I can visit, and then also play around with the Postgres database, which will be running inside Codespaces as well, and even run some queries on it. So, let's get started! Here I am on the repo for this project. So I click the code button and then click Create Codespace on Main. That means it's going to create it on the main branch. And this is where it actually sets up the code space. This does take a few minutes, so I sped it up for the video so that we don't have to wait all that time. But what it's doing here is that it is looking at the Docker file description, building the Docker image, adding any extra commands on top of that image, uh, installing extensions that we might want, all of this is specified in the Docker file and the dev container.json. Uh, so it is slow the first time, but then the next time that you go into the same code space, it will be much faster. So here we are in the project, and you can see all the folders and files for the project. To remember what we want to do, we can open up the readme and look at the instructions and see the first command is to do a pip install of the requirements. So I try to copy and paste it. Now, at least in the Edge browser, the first time I copy and paste inside a code space, I do have to give permission. That might depend on the browser. Once I've given permission, then this you know, particular code space, I can always copy and paste in it. So now it's installing this requirement. So we can see it's installing Flask, it's installing SQL Alchemy, it's installing uh, Alembic for migrations. I installed the Postgres driver. So it's installing all of these packages that we need for this Flask plus Postgres app. Yeah, the Postgres one actually does take a little bit more time. All right, so there we go. Everything is installed. What is the next step? Now we need to create a .m file for our environment variables. And we're going to base it off the m.example file and actually just paste it in exactly. It's already got the, uh, the values that it needs in order to connect to the Postgres database that is running inside this code space. So there is actually Postgres running inside this code space and it is configured with the suggested uh, username and password that's in the .m example file. So now that we've done that, we should be able to actually connect to the database and do an upgrade. So we just did that. Flask DB upgrade that ran the initial migration, which means our database should now have tables in it. We can use this SQL tools extension in order to actually browse them in BizCode. So I, I clicked on that little database icon on the side, and now you can see that I can go and navigate through all the tables in the database. I can look at their schema so we can see the restaurant has a few columns and reviews has columns and the Lembic version has one column. Since that looks good, now I can run the server by typing flask run. And it says that it is running on port 5000 and Codespace actually pops up a little modal that says, oh, hey, it's in port 5000. Do you want to visit it? And here we go. We're actually looking at our you know, local server and you can see it's actually hosted on a github.dev URL. So we've told in our configuration, we've told GitHub code space is that it should expose the 5000 port in such a way that we can actually navigate to an URL. And by default, this is just for us to be able to navigate, but there is actually an option where you can change the port visibility. So if you wanted to be able to share this with somebody else, like a teacher or a student you're in a class, you could ping them the, uh, the port URL and that would work as long as the code space was running and the flask was running. So, really cool for being able to test things out. All right, so now we can see the HP request that happened and we can even use the SQL tools extension to do queries because now there should actually be data in the database because we, you know, I, I just added some restaurants to there. So if we run select star from restaurant, we see that restaurant that I just added. So this is, this is, I think, really cool. Just how easy it is to work with the Postgres database inside this code space. And here we can see the review that I added. These are two related fields. We can also see the query history. 
Now let's try making a change to the app and seeing uh, if we can update it in real time. So we'll just add some exclamation marks here and save and then go back to the website and reload. And there we have it, the exclamation marks. So we can also get live updating of the Flask app and that is amazing for development. So now you might be wondering, how does this actually work? How did we run a Postgres database inside a code space? So I'm going to dive into the files that make it possible. I'm going to start by showing docker compose.yaml because that's what ties together the Flask, the Python container with the Postgres database. So you can see it defines an app service and that app service is built with this docker file. Let's take a look at that docker file. This is built based off of a standard Python Docker image from VizCode, which has some useful tools. It has the Azure Dev CLI, and then it has a Postgres client. So that's really helpful because that's how we can interact with Postgres. Going back to that service definition, uh, we can see some arguments that we passed to it, uh, some indication uh, that we're gonna be working with a volume, which is our Postgres DB, and a network mode, which enables us to communicate with that DB. Then we define the DB. It uses a, a Docker image. That's the official Postgres image. Uh, it has some additional configuration. It has the username and password that I talked about. This is what we define in our .m from before, if you remember. So you see this, these .m environment variables match what's in that Docker compose.yaml. So that's really important to be able to use this inside Codespace. Now we can look at devcontainer.json and this describes more additional information. So it points to the Docker compose file. So this is the first thing that GitHub Codespace looks at. It actually looks at this. It sees that, oh, okay, it's gonna be using a compose file. It sees what service it's gonna be running from that file. And then we have all these other settings. So a lot of these are, have to do with biz code preferences. So this is preference for the SQL tools extension. So we've also told it the username and password. And then we also have a bunch of preferences for Python linting and formatting, and those are quite standard. And then in the extensions, we have the SQL tools extension. So this is really important. This is how I was able to actually run those queries and browse the database. And finally, in forward ports, we forward both the Flask and the Postgres port. That all together is what makes it possible to be running a Flask Python app with a Postgres database inside GitHub Codespaces.